Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to check out my and one other Ashton Miller Time players performance at the Coventry Grand Tournament in the UK. This two day five game event was run alongside a gruelling three day eight game event with both having several brave guard commanders still flying the banner high in the final moments of our outdated 8th edition codex. Across the six players, none of us except one placed in the top 50%, including myself uh, coming um, 86 of 111 players and winning just one game of five. I first will review my performance and lessons learned before examining one very other special performance. So the army list I used was a battalion detachment with two company commanders, a primary psyker, six infantry squads, two command squads, platoon commander, full payload basilisk, and a Hades breaching drill. I then have a spearhead attachment with two tank commanders with demo cannons, las cannons and multi-melters, three standard lemon russes with demo cannons, heavy bolters and flamers, head weapon team with mortars, two scout sentinels and one other infantry squad. I start on two command points. So my game one was into salamanders and playing the mission Abandoned Sanctuaries. My opponent had all the salamander uh, care units of melter bikes and eradicators. Here I took the secondaries of boots on the ground, inflexible command and retrieve Nephilim data. My opponent took bring him down, um, psychic interrogation and the Promethean Creed uh, salamanders one, rewarding points for holding an objective they chose in no man's land and killing units or surviving on that objective. I got first turn and destroyed a squad of his melter bikes and another incursor squad. The 30 inch range of my demolisher cannons outreached his uh, multi melters of only 24 and my primary psych had denied my opponent's uh, psychic interrogation on three occasions. I pulled the win here, uh, maxing boots inflexible, 44 in the primary but only eight on retrieve Nephilim and data with a final score of 85 to my opponent 79, off to a good start. Feeling good, I then went into a mixed craft world at Harlequin's list with Baharov, I think his name is, three squads of swooping hawks and three Harlequin troops being the key units. My secondaries were boots again, inflexible and assassinate with my opponent taking uh, behind enemy lines, psychic ritual and assassinate in the mission data scry salvage. I went second and my opponent then murdered all of my infantry with his sweeping hawks every turn. I had played them before and they were particularly troublesome and three squads was absolutely mental of them. I put my three mortars into them so they whittling them down, um, however four shots each and auto winning on fours means you only can save so many 5 plus armor saves on your infantry. He expertly hid them behind a large terrain piece or to advance in them out 20 inches thanks to uh, Elder Luck Dice, uh, put down a ton of shots and then uh, sky leaping them back into cover for a 3 plus save. Due to this I scored an awful 3 on boots on the ground, 10 on primaries, 14 on a flexible and 10 on assassinate for an abysmal 47 to his 87. On a positive note, I denied Psychic Ritual three times, giving my opponent just seven on this secondary objective. Looking back, I should have been uh, more aware uh, and more aggressive with my Lemon Russes, pushing them out to compress him into a uh, deployment zone, um, as having just three on the boots on the ground was embarrassing, and I should have uh, spotted that he would have been uh, going after my infantry squads more, given the lack of his anti-tank uh, firepower. Here I felt simply outplayed, but feel better equipped when I do uh, play them again. And from that beatdown, I went into Custodes and felt a bit more confident having uh, given uh, my Custodes a go into guard at a practice match uh, with Tank Commander Glenn, and I got tabled. Here with our boots on the ground, inflexible and retrieve uh, Nephilim data, with an opponent going with behind enemy lines, raised banners and um, Auric Mortalis which rewards points for killing um, my most expensive unit, which is one of my tank commanders. My opponent's list was a relatively straightforward uh, custodian's list with three squads of Sagittarium Guard, three Dreadnoughts, and four uh, Golden Jet Bikes being key units. We played the mission Death and Zeal, and he got first turn, and used a stratagem uh, to pre-game move his Jet Bikes, their full 40 inches, and then move them again. I had hidden my tank commander, uh, which was the priority target, uh, well behind a piece of cover, but not enough. 
He hit it with four melter bombs and left it on six wounds in the first turn. He then had a five inch charge into some infantry with it where he failed the charge. I then murdered them with uh, countless uh, Laz guns and Lehman Russes. And at this point I felt relatively comfortable because uh, if he had made the charge, my game would have simply uh, collapsed. We then slogged it out, uh, trading blows, each of his custodians chopping through Lehman Russes and infantry squads and me overwhelming his 4 plus invul save with bucket loads of dice. I nearly tabled the fella, uh, but his blade guard champion made a crucial 11 inch charge into my tank commander, who at this stage was on just one wound. Killing a tank commander in melee scored him a massive 15 victory points and gave him the game. I'd continuously reverse a Lehman Russ away from any threats, but not enough clearly, so a bummer to lose on a relatively small oversight. Next I went into Tau on the mission Tide of Conviction. My opponent had three devil fish with breaches inside, a brick of six battle suits, two characters and three, that's right, three hammerheads. Mercifully I got first turn and blew up a devil fish and wounded a hammerhead. I secured the objective closest to my deployment zone and fed infantry squads into the outlying objective. My opponent then um, had the legion trait which allowed his devil fish to pre-game move or move and debuss uh, the breaches. I can't remember exactly which one it was but it meant turn one there was a crap load of his uh, units compressing me in my deployment zone. He rushed basically everything forward and uh, systematically destroyed all my um, army. My opponent killed off all my infantry squads and command squads with smart missiles and I was tabled by turn five. I had a good late play bringing in some infantry um, and a command squad and platoon commander from reinforcements uh, into his um, deployment edge and two of my scout sentinels uh, performed very well uh, on a forward objective meaning I scored a reasonable 32 on primary but six on inflexible command, seven on boots on the ground and six on mental interrogation for a final score of 61 to a crushing 97. Here my opponent understood guard secondaries, had the tools to clear off any infantry and command squads which are usually safely sat in cover. Feeling bummed from that, uh, my last game was into tower again, but this time uh, only with two hammerheads, one devil fish with a brick of crisis battle suits protected by shield generators and shield drones. We played the mission secure missing artifacts and I took boots, inflexible and psychic interrogation which proved to be my undoing. My opponent had only just two characters, and long distance between deployment zones meant I only scored six on this secondary objective. My opponent got first turn and to my surprise did minimal damage. The hammerheads in both games uh, proved to be somewhat ineffective. Despite their free reroll to hit, they struggled to connect, and I'd usually always pop smoke if I had the chance, however their mere presence uh, meant you had to deal with them. We actually had quite a relatively even shootout throughout the game with a longer distance of the deployment zones favoring my 30 inch uh, demolisher siege cannons. I however lost this game as I forgot to kill off a single crute left sitting on the central objective hidden in a terrain piece, but also because I only scored 6 on psychic interrogation as I said before. I lost this 83 to 87 and was bummed again by this loss, however I do know that a different secondary could have given me the game. So I ended up placing a disappointing 86 of 111 players as said earlier, with another player and a subscriber of this channel uh, placed 6. This level of performance is simply outstanding and I caught it with him in the tournament and he was understandably uh, buzzing. I connected with Ryan to understand how he navigated his uh, secondaries given I struggled with uh, the third choice in several of these occasions as you've heard. He explained that it always takes boots on the ground, inflexible command and raised banners. I've had mixed success with raised banners, but Ryan explains that you should always be scoring 10 on account that you'll probably um, always be holding two objectives in the game, and given you are rewarded for holding uh, the two of them at the end, get to uh, 10 points, no problem. Now looking at his army list, you can clearly understand how he would have scored so well on boots and inflexible command. He's got a company commander, Knight Commander Pask, three tank commanders, 10 infantry squads, all with mortars, an astropath, three command squads, two platoon commanders, two special weapon teams with plasma guns, three scout sentinels, and three heavy weapon squads, all with mortars. 
Whilst giving away a lot for a Sassanite, that would be okay, given Lieben Rice's are deceptively resilient, and infantry characters are buried behind tons of infantry units. Bringing mortars in every single infantry squad uh, would mean a total of 19 mortars running deaf on his opponents. Sure, a lot of these will be hitting on fives, but I think it's a great idea given an infantry squad can always contribute to the fight regardless of where they are on the battlefield. Now examining his opponents, he went first uh, four times over the five games, where I imagine 19 mortars would have uh, picked off a fair few enemy units. Sure, they're only uh, strength 4 AP0, but none of those re-rolling in the heavy weapon teams means um, that's a lot of sixes uh, to wound, which is absolutely fantastic. Against the knight list, depending on how aggressively uh, his opponent had deployed, could have seen a tank commander move the full 10 inches, use a stratagem shock troops, order themselves to pound to dust, and lay low some armages. Likewise, a slow-moving death guard would have been uh, murdered in a third mission of death and zeal, with disgusting resilient doing nothing against damage one mortars. His fourth game into Jakari um, in the mission Tide of Conviction was probably somewhat determined by who got first turn in a game between a shooting and melee army. From what Ryan said, he blew up a couple of boats, and those that did survive charged his infantry units that had been pushed forward, murdering them of course, but then being mowed down by tank commanders. All in all, an amazing performance by Ryan, helping to push up the Astromel of Time win rate in his final moments of our old codex. As you all know, uh, the new book is due to be uh, released on the 25th of November, and I can't wait. There are some nice rules being uh, previewed by GW, uh, which I'll cover next week, and these have all clearly been uh, leaked by Mordian Glory. So this video is probably going to be one of the last uh, ones to cover 8th edition Astromilitarum, with I doubt many other YouTubers doing any videos on what we can now call Old Guard Topics. So here's to hoping the new book is as good as we all deserve to be after patiently wait for many, many years. On a different note, I've launched uh, my own channel merchandise with a mug, a t-shirt and a sweater being available. Feel free to get one to support me uh, as I grow the channel or you can simply subscribe, like, comment or share this video. As always, you could join my Patreon platoon if you're feeling a bit more committed. So keep your bayonet sharp, lads gun oiled, faith in the Emperor strong. Patreon platoon, sound off. Tank Commander Glenn. Tank Commander Mitchell. Tank Commander Watchdog Van Etten. Colour Sergeant DuPont, Sergeants Adal, Gilliam, the Colonel Merrill, Veterans Gibson, Hall, Lundin, Guzman's Beard, Coquelin, Flint, Hills, Malik, Nitin, Nguyen, Smith, Tom, Tomkin, Conscript Basson, England, Goodwin.